I think the beautiful Mullen put it perfectly. Every man deserves the opportunity to grow a little bit of luxury. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, more importantly, Mo Bros and Mo Sisters. <laughs> For the next 17 minutes, I'm going to share with you my Movember journey and how, through that journey, we've redefined charity, we're redefining the way prostate cancer researchers are working together throughout the world, and I hope, through that process, that I inspire you to create something significant in your life, something significant that will go on and make this world a better place. So the most common question I get asked, and I'm going to answer it now so I don't have to do it over drinks tonight, uh, is how did this come about? How did Movember start? Well, normally a charity starts with the cause and someone that is directly affected by a cause. They then go on to create an event, and beyond that, a foundation to support that. Pretty much in every case, that's how a charity starts. Not so with Movember. Movember started in a very traditional Australian way. It was on a Sunday afternoon. It was my brother and a mate having a few beers. And they were watching the world go by, had a few more beers, and had, the conversation turned to 70s fashion and how everything manages to come back into style. There's a few more beers, so there has to be some stuff that hasn't come back. <laughs> then one more beer, and it was, whatever happened to the moustache? Why hasn't that made a comeback? <laughs> so there's a lot more beers, and then the day ended with a challenge to bring the moustache back. So in Australia, Mo is slang for moustache. So we renamed the month November, Movember, and created some pretty basic rules which still stand today. And they are, start the month clean shaven, rock a moustache, not a beard, not a goatee, a moustache for the 30 days of November. And then we agreed that we would come together at the end of the month, have a moustache themed party, <laughs> and award a prize for the best, and of course, the worst moustache. <laughs> <coughs> Now, trust me, when you're growing a moustache back in 2003, and there were 30 of us back then, and this is before the ironic uh, hipster moustache movement. <laughs> it created a lot of controversy. <laughs> so my boss wouldn't let me go and see clients. My girlfriend at the time, who's no longer my girlfriend, <laughs> hated it. Parents would shuffle kids away from us. But we came together at the end of the month and we celebrated our journey, and it was a real journey. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And in 2004, I said to the guys, that was so much fun, we need to legitimize this so we can get away with it year on year. <laughs> so we started thinking about that, and we were inspired by the women around us and all they were doing for breast cancer. We thought, you know what, there's nothing for men's health. Why is that? Why, why can't we combine growing a moustache and do something for men's health? And I started to research that topic and discovered prostate cancer is the male equivalent of breast cancer in terms of the number of men that die from it and diagnosed with it. But there was nothing for this cause. So we married growing a moustache with prostate cancer. And then we created our tagline, which is changing the face of men's health. And that eloquently describes a challenge changing your appearance for the 30 days, and also the outcome that we're trying to achieve, getting men engaged in their health, having them have a better understanding about the health risks that they face. So with that model, I then uh, cold called the CEO of the Prostate Cancer Foundation. I said to him, I've got the most amazing idea that's going to transform your organization. <laughs> and I didn't want to share with him the idea over the phone, so I convinced him to meet with me for coffee in Melbourne in 2004. We sat down, and I shared with him my vision of getting men growing moustaches across Australia, raising awareness for this cause, <laughs> and funds for his organisation. And I needed a partnership to legitimately do that. And I said, we're going to come together at the end, we're going to have a moustache-themed party, we're going to have DJs, we're going to celebrate life, and we're going to change the face of men's health. And he just looked at me and laughed, and he said, he said, Adam, that's a really novel idea. 
but we're an ultra-conservative organization. We can't have anything to do with you. <laughs> so I paid for coffee that day. <laughs> and uh, his parting comment as we shook hands was, listen, if you happen to raise any money out of this, we'll gladly take it. <laughs> so my lesson that year was persistence. And we persisted. And we got 450 guys growing moustaches. And together, we raised $54,000. And we donated every cent of that to the Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia. And that represented, at the time, the single biggest donation that ever received. So from that day forward, my life has become about a moustache. Every day, this morning, I wake up and go, my life is about a moustache. <laughs> Essentially, I'm a moustache farmer. And my season is November. So in 2005, the campaign uh, got more momentum, was more successful in Australia and then New Zealand. Um, and then in 2006, we came to a pivotal point. Uh, we, we, it was consuming so much of our time after hours on weekends that we thought, we either need to close this down or figure a way to fund Movember so that I could quit my job and go and spend more time in the organization and take it to the next level. It's really interesting when you try and figure a way to fund a fundraising organization built off growing moustaches. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's not too many people interested in investing in that. Not even the Prostate Cancer Foundation, who had raised about $1.2 million for at that stage. So, Again, we persisted, and Foster's Brewing came to the party and gave us our first ever uh, sponsorship. And that was enough for me to quit my job. I did consulting on the side. And leading into November uh, 2006, we'd run through all the money from Foster's, we'd run through all the money I had, and essentially we had no money left. And we'd convinced all our suppliers, creative agencies, web development agencies, hosting companies, whatnot, to delay their billing until December. And so we'd racked up at this stage about $600,000 worth of uh, debt. So if November 2006 didn't happen, the four founders, well, we would have been broke, we would have been homeless, sitting on the street with moustaches. <laughs> but we thought, you know what, if that's the worst thing that happens, so what? We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. And it taught us the importance of taking risks, and really smart risks. Then in early 2007, a really interesting thing happened. We had Mobros from, from Canada, from the US, and from the UK emailing us and calling us and saying, hey, there's nothing for prostate cancer. Bring this campaign to these countries. So we thought, why not? Let's do it. So I cold called the CEO of Prostate Cancer Canada, and I said to him, I have this most amazing concept. <laughs> it's going to transform your organization. I don't want to tell you about it now, but will you meet with me if I fly all the way to Toronto? So I flew here, met down on Front Street East, and we sat in the boardroom. I said, right, here's my vision of getting men growing moustaches all across Canada, raising awareness and funds for your organization. And he looked at me and laughed and said, Adam, it sounds like a really novel idea, but we're an ultra-conservative organization. <laughs> I've heard this before. I know, I know how it goes. Uh, but he said, we will partner with you but we're not going to invest in it. You need to figure a way to bring this campaign across here and make it work. So what we did was we took some of the money that we raised in Australia to bring the campaign across to this country, the US and the UK. And we did that because we knew if this was successful, we could raise infinitely more money globally than we could just in Australia. And that money fuels research, and that research will get us to a cure. We're not about finding an Australian cure or a Canadian cure. We're about finding the cure. So in 2007, uh, we brought the campaign across here, and it, was, it, it set the stage um, for the campaign. It wasn't as successful as we thought it would be. We were sort of very gung-ho with our success in Australia and New Zealand at that stage. So that year really taught us the importance of being patient and really understanding the local market before you become so bold as to set lofty targets. But what I'm really pleased to say is, in 2010, Movember became a truly global movement. Canada was just pipped at the post in terms of the number one fundraising campaign in the world. Last year, we had 450,000 
Mobro spread across the world, and together we raise $77 million. And that makes Movember now the biggest funder of prostate cancer research and support programs in the world. And that is an amazing achievement when you think about us growing moustaches. <laughs> and for us, we have redefined charity. Our ribbon is a hairy ribbon. <laughs> our ambassadors are the Mobros and the Mo Sisters, and I think that's been fundamental to our success. We hand across our brand and our campaign to those people. We let them embrace it and interpret it in their own way. So now I live in, in Los Angeles because the Prostate Cancer Foundation of the US is based there. And I always get asked by the media down there because it's so celebrity di driven, who are your celebrity ambassadors? And I say to them, last year we were fortunate enough to have 450,000 celebrity ambassadors. I go, what, what do you mean? It's like, Every single person, every single Mobro and Mo sister that participates in Movember is our celebrity ambassador. And that is so, so important and fundamental to our success. Now, what I want to share with you is one of my most touching uh, Movember moments. And it happened here in Toronto last year at the end of the uh, campaign. Uh, I was out with a team. It was the end of Movember. We'd had a great campaign. And to be honest, we'd had uh, our fair share of beer that night. But I said, you know what, I think we've got one more bar left in us. So we piled into a taxi, and this is our taxi driver. And I was sitting in the back seat, and he turned around and said, where are you going? I said, hang on, that is an amazing moustache. <laughs> <clears throat> and he said, I'm doing it for November. And I said, so am I. And I said, uh, Tell me your Movember story. And he goes, listen, I know it's about men's health. I know it's about prostate cancer, but this is for breast cancer. I said, OK, that's interesting. And he goes, last year, my mum passed away from breast cancer in Sri Lanka because we couldn't afford proper treatment for her. And he said, this moustache is my tribute to my mum. And we sort of all choked up in the back of the taxi. And I didn't tell him who I was because I didn't think it was appropriate. And I just shook his hand. I said, thank you so much. Your mum would be so proud. And from that moment, I realized that Movember is so much more than a mustache, having a joke. It's about each person coming to this platform, embracing it in their own way, and being significant in their own life. For us now at Movember, we really focus on three program areas and having a true impact. Awareness and education, survivor support programs, and research. Now, we always focus naturally on how much we raise because it's a very tangible outcome. But for me, awareness and education is more important than the funds we raise because I know that is changing and saving lives today. And it's probably best exampled by uh, a young guy that I met at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas at the start of the year. He came up to me and said, Thank you for starting Movember. I said, thank you for doing Movember. I looked at him and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can't grow a moustache. <laughs> and I said, what's your Movember story? And he said, I grew the worst moustache ever. <laughs> but I went home for Thanksgiving dinner, and pretty quickly the conversation around the table turned to what the hell was going on. <laughs> and we talk, I, I, I talked to them about Movember. And then after that, my dad came up to me, and at the age of 26, for the first time ever, I had a conversation with my dad one-on-one -on -one about men's health. I had a conversation with my dad about prostate cancer, and I learned that my gra grandfather had prostate cancer. And I was able to share with my dad that he was twice as likely to get that disease, and he didn't know that, and he hadn't been getting screened for it. So now that guy is getting screened for prostate cancer. So those conversations, getting men engaged in this at, at whatever age, is so critically important, and in my view, so much more important than the funds we raise. Now to the funds we raise and research and how we're redefining research. We fund prostate cancer foundations now in 13 countries. We literally fund hundreds, if not thousands, of institutions and researchers around the world. And when we looked at this more recently, we realized there's a real lack of collaboration going on, even within institutions, let alone nationally, let alone globally. And this is not unique to prostate cancer. This is, this is cancer research the world over. And so we said, right, 
we redefine charity. We need to redefine the way these guys operate. How do we do that? So what we did was we created our global action plan. We're taking 10% of what's raised in each country now and putting it into a global fund. We've got the best prostate cancer scientific minds in the world that look after that fund. And they come together each year and identify the number one priority. And that last year was getting a better screening test. So they identified that as a priority, and then they've gone and recruited now 300 researchers from around the world that are studying that topic, essentially the same topic. So now we're funding them to the tune of about five or six million dollars to collaborate and bringing them together. And that's a unique thing in the cancer world. And we know through that collaboration, it will accelerate outcomes. And that's how we're redefining the research world. So, what I know about my Movember journey is that with a really creative idea, with passion, with persistence, and a lot of patience, four mates, four moustaches can inspire a room full of people. And that room full of people can go on and inspire a city, and that city is Melbourne, my home. And that city can go on and inspire a state, and that state can go on and inspire a nation, and beyond that, you can create a global movement that is changing the face of men's health. My name is Adam Garoni, and that's my story. Thank you. <laughs>